Spix's Macafax. The 2011 animated movie Rio featured a storyline with a pair of Spix's macaw called Blue and Jewel. The male character was likely based on a real bird named Presley, who lived in Colorado for years and later repatriated to Brazil. The species is named after German naturalist Johann Baptist von Spix, who collected the first specimens in 1819. However, fellow German naturalist Georg Markgrave was the first European to describe the species in 1638. The species is also known by the more descriptive name Little Blue Macaw. Spix's Macaw Scientific Name Cyanocytus spixii is the scientific name for Spix's macaw. The name of the genus Cyanocyta derives from the Greek words quanos, which means blue, and cytikos, which means parrot. As the name suggests, Spix's macaw is a type of true parrot, a long-tailed, vibrantly colored New World bird. The species is the only known member of its genus. It is closely related to the blue-headed macaw, the red-bellied macaw, the great green macaw, the scarlet macaw, and many others. Spix's macaw appearance and behavior. Spix's macaw can be identified by its striking blue plumage. The exact color of the body varies from the brilliant turquoise blue along its breast and abdomen to the duller bluish gray of the head. It also features gray skin, pale yellow eyes, and a black curved bill. From head to tail, an average member of the species measures around 22 inches, the elegant tail feathers are about as long as the rest of the body. This makes it slightly smaller than the typical macaw species. Males tend to be larger than females, but the sexes are otherwise similar in appearance. The raucous bird has an astonishing vocal range. In their natural habitat, macaws communicate with each other through screeches and squawking sounds. Some of their most common sounds include kra ark that it makes during flight and a wichaka sound for mating. Like many parrots, it has the remarkable ability to mimic human speech, which has made it a popular pet in the illegal bird trade. Because there were so few individuals left in the wild by the time scientists began studying them, a lot of information about the bird's natural behavior still rests on speculation. For example, the birds tend to cluster in pairs or family units, but it is believed that they may have once traveled in flocks of up to 15 individuals in the wild. They can be quite aggressive when they feel threatened, but they are mostly docile and shy around humans or strangers. Along with crows and ravens, parrots are considered to be some of the most intelligent birds on the earth. In studies, parrots have demonstrated the ability to observe, learn, and remember things around them. Their large brain to body size and neurological anatomy seem to be key aspects to their complex cognition, linguistic capabilities, and social behavior. Due to its remarkable intelligence, Spix's macaw has a fascinating behavioral quirk. It follows a daily routine with a degree of precision that seems almost human. Flight paths, hunting strategies, and bathing all seem to be planned out according to a daily schedule. The birds are most active during the day, and they sleep at night. They may occasionally move from place to place in response to food availability and nesting sites, but they otherwise remain within a limited range of their home. Spix's macaw reproduction, babies, and lifespan. It is believed that the Spix's macaw forms intense lifelong bonds with its mate. The lengthy courtship period includes a series of elaborate rituals such as formation flying and mutual feeding. However, the captive population exhibits different breeding behavior compared to the former wild population. It is suspected that males may have competed with each other for mates and nesting spots in the wild. The bird's breeding season takes place each year between November and March, or August in captivity. The wild couples produce a fresh clutch of two to three eggs in the hollows of the tree. Because they are creatures of routine, the birds seem to reuse the same nest location every breeding season. The female incubates the egg for 26 days before it hatches. It takes about two months for a young bird to fully fledge, though the birds may continue to feed with the parents for a few more months until the chicks achieve full independence. If the young birds are threatened by a predator, then the parents may attempt to feign injury in order to draw the threat away from the nest. Chicks reach full sexual maturity in about seven years in captivity, which is an especially long time for a parrot. The species has a typical lifespan of at least 20 years in the wild with an average of 28 or 29 years. Captive birds tend to have a longer lifespan. Presley died at the age of 40. Spix's macaw population. Spix's macaw was once prolific across the Kainga, but it seemed to enter a period of steep decline after European colonization. Years of deforestation and agricultural development pushed the species to the brink of extinction. The last known wild macaw disappeared in 2000. 
A wild bird was briefly sighted in 2016, raising hopes that more birds might remain in the wild, but it is believed that the individual may have been released recently from captivity. The red list of threatened species now lists the bird as officially extinct in the wild. The last wild macaw became something of an international celebrity in the 1990s. Unable to find another member of its own species to mate with, the bird paired up with the bright green illegers macaw, which is a closely related species. The couple engaged in typical relationship behavior. They flew together during the day, and the male escorted the female back to her nest almost every night. In order to make him breed, scientists introduced him to a captive female Spix's macaw, but the experiment ended prematurely when the female died without producing any chicks. The male eventually produced a hybrid offspring with the illegers macaw, but the embryo did not survive for long. Spix's macaw is currently being kept alive and bred in captivity, where the birds are fed by hand. These efforts are overseen by the Brazilian government. However, the species cannot return to the wild until the habitat is restored. That is why efforts are underway to create protected areas in the state of Bahia for eventual reintroduction into the wild. All of the remaining birds are descended from only a few individuals and therefore have low genetic variability.